Hey everybody, this is David and this is going to be my video to help you guys understand the franchise of Planet of the Apes. Some of you are probably wondering, well, you know, I really enjoy this Dawn of the Planet of the Apes movie. Or maybe you want to watch it, but you don't know what film you have to watch that connects to this one. And I'm going to help you a little bit with that. So this is my video for that and um, get out your pens and pencils and paper ready and start taking notes because this is for you. First, let's start at the beginning. The beginning would be the 1968 classic Planet of the Apes starring Charlton Heston in the, in the, um, the, as the main character. And uh, that would be the first movie, uh, the original film. And uh, there were four sequels to it from my understanding. Uh, 1970, 1971, 1972, 1973. They all came out literally two years after the original they started releasing a sequel each year and those movies were Beneath the Planet of the Apes, Escape from the Planet of the Apes, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, and Battle for the Planet of the Apes. Um, I haven't seen the the later three but I did see the original and I did see Beneath the Planet of the Apes. That one is also with Charlton Heston but I think after that I, I don't know if he's in the other ones because I didn't see the other three uh, yeah I mean those are the five films those five films are their own separate continuity um, none of the new ones connect to those well I'll get to that later but anyways let's fast forward into the future so after those five films we get to 2001 which was a remake of Planet of the Apes the 2001 film directed by Tim Burton, which a lot of people <laughs> don't like. I thought it was okay, but a lot of people don't like them. Um, that one is a remake of the original. There's certain plot elements and stuff that is that is reused in this one, and uh, there's some differences too, like the name of the main character I think is different, played by Mark Wahlberg. That's how you know it's the 2001 version. That one has Mark Wahlberg in it. The original one has Charlton Heston. So, um, this one is probably the only Apes movie that, uh, is on its own. And it kind of sucks, too, because that ending, I would have liked to see how they would have explained that in this, in a second film if they had continued. Uh, but they didn't, and, um, so we're left with a confusing ending that makes absolutely no sense. Um, then we fast forward ten years later to 2011. And this is the movie that actually connects to the new one that's out in theaters right now, uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. And this one is with James Franco, and this one to me was great. It was a great film, and this is the one that actually got me interested in Planet of the Apes. Because even though I enjoyed the Tim Burton one to an extent, it was very forgettable for me. It's, it's a movie, like, I think about it nowadays, and I don't remember too much that happened in that film. Um... I know I've seen it, I, and I know I enjoyed it, it's just, it wasn't, it's not a film that I guess I have fond memories of. And, uh, The Rise of the Planet of the Apes, though, I remember a lot more clearer. And, um, it's been a while since I've seen that one, too. So, uh, the fact that I'm, I remember that one more says something. And, obviously, most of that has to do with, uh, Andy Serkis's performance. So, that one is the prequel. I mean, no, sorry. It's a full-out reboot because it doesn't redo the story like the 2001 film did. This one takes it more into the past before the apes take over and, and shows how their rise to power came to be. It shows how the apes started becoming intelligent and, and how they started becoming their own race, if you will, which leads us to Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, where the war is starting to begin. The war is starting to take effect. A virus is killing off, off all humans, and that's what's leading us into the war. At the end of this film, at the end of Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, it le it's going to lead into another film, which um, I'm very excited about, and I, can't, I hope they make a third one, because... Um, it's going to be interesting to see where they can take this because there's so many ways they can take it. 
And um, in some ways, though, the original Planet of the Apes connects to these two. Uh, because in Rise of the Planet of the Apes with James Franco, there is a scene in the movie where they, they start hinting at this, sh this rocket ship that's going into space. And later in the movie, it's said on the news that the ship has disappeared. That ship in the movie is actually the ship the, from the original 1968 film. And what th that movie is saying is that eventually this will happen. And because the original Planet of the, Planet of the Apes takes place way into the future... The, everything that's happening now is happening in the present day. It's happening not in the future, but it's showing us how it will eventually get to that point. And then when Charlton Heston arrives into the future and sees apes that have taken over, that's where that one will come into play. Now, the question on everyone's mind is, will they remake that one eventually? They could. But the way these movies are all set up right now, there's so much more story they can tell before that eventually happens. But what I think will happen is that this will be Andy Serkis's trilogy. And his trilogy will end with the war with the apes, I think, with the apes taking over the world. And humans are now the, the lesser known species. And... Um, it will be interesting to see how that all plays out. Um, like I said, I can't wait for a third one because I'm I'm interested to see where they take it. Maybe one day we will get another remake of the original, but connected to these newer films. And I think that's why also why these newer films, because they're more grounded and the apes feel more like real apes. But we're seeing, to, we're starting to see them more and more act like humans like this one they talked a little bit more but they're still doing sign languages which um give them a more prehistoric um way of acting so yeah guys that's my list there's three ways you can watch this movie there's the original ones the five original films made in the 1960s and 70s where you can watch those five then there's the tim burton movie and then there's Rise of the Planet of the Apes and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And if you want, you can add the original one to the end there to like see it all come together, sort of. But uh, the original one you can avoid if you want. But I always say go and watch all these films in a film's past because I think it's always great to like learn the history of where these movies started and how they are today because you can see the mistakes and errors they made and how they're still um, trying to fix things today so that's it guys there's there's your answers okay there's your your movie knowledge and go and enjoy those films and go watch Dawn of the Planet of the Apes it's awesome that's it